I'm back. Ha <laughs> Y'all are gonna be mad. So I got a problem. My game, Orchestralis, looks like garbage. Why? Very good question. I have zero clue. A critical part of a successful game is a uniform art style. When it comes to pixel art, a great way to achieve this is to have a specific size that everything fits into. I don't know what its name is. Tile size? Yeah. Orchestralis uses a 24 by 24 pixel box as its scale. These cobblestone tiles, they fit in a 24 by 24 box. This sprite doesn't. Orchestralis is an open world RPG with more characters than beans in a Bush's baked beans can. That means I'm gonna be doing a lot of spriting. But if you're one of the two people who watched my previous video, you would already. What? Huh? How? What? When? What? Huh? Oh. I could go about spriting like this. This ain't doing it. In Orchestralis, all the characters are, you know, the same species. Well, not not really. You'd go more like instrument, aerophone, non-free, brass, valve, cylindrical bore, trumpet, trumpet. They're humanoid. They're, they're all humanoid. They're pretty similar in shape. So, here's the plan. Anatomy is hard. I want to minimize the time I spend learning that the distance between the wrist and the inside of the elbow of an arm bent at 90 degrees is the same length as the hand. I, wait, what? Huh? If all the characters are similar in shape, they're all similar in anatomy. Therefore, I can do anatomy once and have it apply to all of them. That's right. I made base character models. That, that's it. That's the best way to sprite. Guaranteed or your money back. Please don't leave, I, I need view time. Aye, but we ain't done. I can't be putting these beef and bean crumpet looking nerds into the game. They look rancid. I gotta actually, you know, make a character. Thankfully, I already have a character. This guy. Now, with my utterly gorgeous base sprites, I can go and match all the limbs to the base and bam, animated character. What's this character you're asking? Well, it's no other than the Tubanite. The art for which I made about a year ago, and posted in the Tuba Warriors community. Oh? What was that? Y y you never heard of the TWC? Ho <laughs> ho Well, allow me! Way back, over two years ago, in the summer of 2020, a cultural phenomena called the Tuba Boss themes occurred in the YouTube internet space. A bunch of people made Tuba Boss themes, then a bunch more people decided yeah, this would be cool if we made extensive lore based on nothing fueled purely by the internet hive mind. And so they did. Then a guy named B2 Super Battle Droid was like, yo, let's make a Discord server for all these nerds. And now the Tubal Warriors community is 9,000 people strong, and it's now the central hub of the entire Tubal Warrior cultural phenomena, with places for art, music, lore, and all the Tubal Boss games currently in development. There's also an Orchestralis server if you're interested. Editor Spoon here. Uh, I forgot to write in the script, but I thought I should mention uh, to all y'all who DM'd me asking if they could join the Orchestralis dev team, I am very grateful for you guys' interest in helping out. You know, I love y'all, but Orchestralis is a solo project. I'll let y'all know if it changes, but until then, go check out the other projects in the TWC. They're looking for some nerds, so go show them some love. Actually, th this isn't ed Editor Spoon. I wrote this in the script. I thought it might make me sound cool. Uh, subscribe. Alright, we got the new sprite. Time to plop it into Godot. Boom, bop, plap. There we go. That's more like it. So now I gotta turn this into animations. I've never done this before. So apparently Godot has this thing called Animation Player. Aight, we got animations. But, that's not all. Godot also has this thing called Animation Tree. Literal godsend. With this, I can make an output map and be like, Ayo, hey, you moving? Great, what direction? Yo, we got that scoot and move on. The idle animations are just one stationary frame. The brilliant thing 
is that I can do all that with code. Epic. Now we have movement animations. Oh, sh- My God, it was the if statement. Uh, it's been two hours. Uh, okay. Okay, so the character is Champ Chillin in this dungeon-y training area. It's supposed to be the stereotypical hangout place for gladiators before the entering the arena, y you know that thing in pop culture. There's gonna be an arena over there. You'll, you'll understand why in the next video. This cozy little space is gonna need a cobblestone floor, sand floor, stone brick walls, and some accent walls to make it look cool. And the wall tops. And now, all this is gonna work flawlessly. No problem. I got these back walls, but they don't exactly work with the player. I I, I can't put them on top of the player either because oop, where'd that doofus go? There's two solutions. One, don't have back walls. You see, that'd be great. But there's also these front walls. And no, I'm not gonna push the room back. I'm too lazy. We established this. Two, the back walls disappear when the player walks into the room. Okay, here's how this is gonna work. We got this goofy little area node, and he's gonna be like, Hey, off my lawn! And Walt's gonna be like, ah! Anyway, I think that's all. I, I don't know, I'm writing this part of the script like two weeks after I did all this stuff. So I had to write a bunch of essays for. The oh, wait. This isn't right.